What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Call Game, Kenny for real, whatever you want to call it. Today's been a rough day for me for a few reasons, man. The first of all, the Bulls blew a 20-point lead in like two minutes. So that's never good to happen. And in today's video, I think majority of it will be about the Bulls. Uh, I will talk about some of the other games, too. But I have to rant as a diehard Bulls fan. You know how it goes. Um, but another thing that made today not very good, I was in a meeting with a brand that I have been wanting to work with for so many years. This is our first impression. I was so happy to get this, this meeting. I'm trying to be all nice, trying to be charismatic. In the middle of me talking to, to the CEO or general manager of this brand, you know that Chris Paul frame jersey that's been on set for, what, six months now? It decided to fall in the middle of the meeting and shatter everywhere. Then I had to figure out, should I get this glass up in our meeting or should I leave this down and finish the meeting, then get it? So if I don't end up working with this brand, I'm, I'm blaming it on Chris Paul. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. We're going to talk about a lot of basketball, and you may disagree, which is completely okay. Uh, we built this hub of NBA fans that uh, can disagree with stuff, and we completely be okay with that. You know, have debates in the comment section. And I want to say I only speak for myself. I don't speak for all Bulls fans across the world. Um, I, I just speak for Kenny. So let's talk about this first game, the Bulls game, the one that everybody want to hear me talk about. First of all, I want to get a lot of, lot of love to OKC because as much as this was a collapse for the Bulls, it was also OKC being great. This is why I've been saying that I am jealous of OKC's tank or rebuild, whatever you want to call it, because this is easily a game that a team as young as them, a team that is rebuilding, can go into halftime down by 20 and be like, OK, uh, we, let's just not lose by 40 tonight. It's OK. We lost this. So we'll be back in, in a couple days. Let's just not lose by 40. But instead, they were like, no, we have a chance to win this game. And they came out guns blazing. They they ramped up the intensity on defense because they know our guards throw scaries. And they were amazing. And a lot of that is due to two certain players. And that is Shea Gilles Alexander and Lou Dort, who were both super, super phenomenal. Um, I think Shea Gilles Alexander had like four points in the third quarter. And the reason he only had four points is because it was the Lou Dort show. It had been a running joke about OKC always finding an elite defender on the wing but you ain't got to guard him on the offensive side of the ball. We talk about Andre Robeson. We talk about Lou Dort. And through the first 12 games of the season, Lou Dort has completely turned that narrative around. The scouting report for the Chicago Bulls was leave Lou Dort open. And he made us pay. He made us pay. Now, I was hoping that after he hit like two, we'd start to get a hand up. I guess the Bulls didn't really want to do that. But it's just it's just refreshing to see a guy that was, I think Lou Dort was undrafted to come into the league and, first of all, play a huge part on, on that team, uh, end up winning the starting spot, making big plays in the playoffs, having the biggest game of his career in the game seven, then to follow that up the following season and be even better. It's just, it's a great, it's a great story. And I just talk about his offense. I ain't even mentioned how this man's hands was on every single pass. Every single pass that we threw today was a scary from our, from our players. And Lou Dort was like, yeah, I'm going to get all of these interceptions. So shout out to Lou Dort. Shout out to Shea Gilles Alexander. I talked about a couple episodes ago, there was a game, I think it was against the Spurs, where he ended up with 10 total shots. And I was like, Shea, you're their future all-star. You're the future superstar. You cannot end with 10 shot attempts. You just can't. And today, <laughs> he's like a lot more than 10 shots. And he helped me win a lot of money, too. That was the silver lining on things. I, I put in the bet on the parlay, and I ended up like with $800 richer. So the silver lining, the Bulls blew a, lot, a, a big lead. But I walked out $800 richer, you know what I'm saying? But let's talk about the Bulls now. Um, the Bulls have put me on this roller coaster ride this season. Think about, go back to watch my first episode when I talked about this season. We started off the season three blowouts or something like that, and then we go on our West Coast trip. We win a couple games. We go on our West Coast trip. We come back on 20 on the Portland Trailblazers. I was on cloud nine. We, we go to L.A. We have battles with the Lakers and the Clippers that were this close. We lose, but this close, growth. And then a game like this happens, and you're like, what was all of that for? Why do I even get my hopes up as a Bulls fan, right? Why do I do it? Because games like this happen, right? If you do not know, the Bulls are up by 10 with a minute and a half to go in this game. And they fumbled it, right? And I knew, and, and this is going to sound crazy because 10 points with a minute and a half to go, 99.9% .9 of the time these games are closed out. I knew the Bulls were fumbling this game. If you were watching, you knew that the third quarter was abysmal for the Bulls. They had like 10 turnovers in the third quarter alone. And, and the thing that makes it worse about this roster is when things start to get rough, I don't know if we have anybody on our roster that can get everything settled. And I think that's what the role of Tomas Sadoransky is supposed to be, but he is still not here. So our guards are throwing scary Lou Dort, George Hill, Shea are clamping up in these passing lanes, and we can't swing the ball. We're not running our sets as effectively. We're getting moving screens. Everything looks like we are afraid to play basketball. And what makes it worse, it's not like we were going against the Lakers. It's not like we were going against the Clippers. We're going against a team that's just as young as y'all. 
Jess is their their best player is like 22. Their second best player today is like 22. The oldest player they had was George Hill, but George Hill was on the court. He was impactful, but it's not like we were going against the Heatles. So, so it's a very, very, very rough loss. And I've been seeing a lot of fans hit up me and be like, Kenny, who do you want to keep on this team? Who do you want to trade? And I'm not even thinking that way. I'm just not. I'm just not. Because I, I, it's hard to gauge who can be here when it matters for us, right? Like, okay, so so Zach Levine has put up ridiculous, ridiculous stat lines in all of these losses. In the, in the Clippers game, he hit like 10 threes, it feels like. And, and in this game, he ended up with 35, and he had eight threes. So I'm, I'm definitely not one of the people that is blaming Zach Levine. Please, please, please understand, I am not blaming Zach Levine. But when things get rough... Zach Levine does have the ball in his hands a lot, and 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 we would not be in the position to be competitive without Zach Levine. So get that right. But what ter- what would make Zach Levine from a guy that's putting up amazing stats on a bad team to an All Star to a maybe even more than that is how he could be able to close out games. And sure, he hit the he hit the big shot against the Portland Trail Blazers, and even in that game, we kind of fumbled the bag if you remember. What will turn Zach Levine from this really good player to an All Star is his ability to be like okay. My team right now is playing like trash. I need to be the guy to get us out of that. And at times he does, but it seems like more often than not, he doesn't. And that, and, and, and that's not an attack on him because he's still growing as a player. He's still growing into the all-star player that he could be. He needs to be able to do that. And I need the rest of the four guys on his team to make it easier for him. Become threats. Stop being so damn scared. Stop being scared of the moment. Stop being scared of the moment because I know Zach Levine is our star, but it seems like when things are rough, we need a bucket. We need a bucket. Here's Zach isolation. And it doesn't have to be a Zach Levine isolation. It could be Zach Levine, um, a playmaker for somebody else, but it turns late games. It's Zach Levine with the ball and everybody's standing still watching him like I'm watching him on TV. So that's all I really want to say. There are bright spots here. Wendell Carter has been amazing for us, but that pick and roll defense has to go, Billy Donovan. It just has to go. Wendell Carter be way he's he's way more agile on the perimeter than I think Billy Donovan is giving him credit for. The reason they sink far back is because they're afraid that he's gonna get beat on a switch or something like that. I think he's better than that. At least let's test it. Because the good guards are going to penalize us. And that's what happened all season long. That's all I really want to say. A Larry Marketing came back. I'm not I'm not judging Larry Marketing on, on his first game back after all of that. It's a rough one. It is a rough one. Um that was seven minutes. Oh, my God. Okay, let's get to the rest of the games of the day. Man, I, I did not want to talk that long, but it's hard for me not to be passionate about my favorite team. What can I say? Um, Boston versus the Orlando Magic is a game, like I mentioned, that with all the injuries and with the, the virus and things, it was a game that I did not tune into. Um, I just, just at all, I didn't watch a single minute other than seeing Taco fall on Instagram, hit a three-pointer. I know that since Markel Fultz has gone down with his injury, the Orlando Magic have been blown out in every single game, it feels like. So that's, that's rough for Magic fans and – I don't really know where they go from here, especially since they extended two of their guys who are both injured. Um, but a win for Boston. Um, I talked. I think I talked about Drummond turning this Hakeem Olajuwon. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. Uh, Drummond turns to Hakeem Olajuwon. And I want to talk about this because the Knicks have fallen back down to maybe the place we thought they were going to be. And and I was listening to Zach Lowe's podcast. This is like a, when the, the Knicks were really good, right, a couple weeks ago. And he was like, as much as a great story it is, we know it's not real because I think at the time they were shooting at a historically high three-point percentage. They were, they were playing defense at an historically high defensive rating or low defensive rating or however you want to say it. They were in a legendary defense. They were a legendary offense, and we know that that's not who they really were with their personnel. Um, but it's sad to see them fall back down because I think Knicks fans have been through a lot. But you can see it as potentially Kay Cunningham being in New York at um, at the beginning of the next season. Start quickly. Um is all I really want to say. Mitchell Robinson was really bad in this one. There was times where they were double teaming Andre Drummond, and he would, on the block, he was being double teamed on the block, and he would dribble out of a th- double team and dunk the ball. Uh, Jetty Osmond, great third quarter. I don't know why I watched this game. I don't know why I watched this game, but I did. I, maybe it's because Drummond was playing so well, I couldn't turn off, but but I, I watched all of this game. Drummond is a weird player because he obviously is playing for his contract with them trading for Jared Allen, who was at the game. Oh, Kevin Porter Jr. was at the game, too, which is beautiful. I can't wait to see Kevin Porter Jr. play. Um, Drummond is playing for his contract right now because when they traded for Jared Allen, that's obviously a sign that Drummond is not on their radar to be resigned, right? And Drummond as a player is obviously good enough to get you good stats, right, and, and good enough to be impactful. But I think they're trying to figure out. He's trying to play himself into a contract bigger than probably what he'll end up getting, right? 
because the center market is kind of saturated. And though he puts up good numbers, I can't imagine, and hopefully he proves me wrong here because it's not a knock on him, I can't imagine Andre Drummond being on a very good team. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. And, and if it doesn't, I'm sorry. Um, the next game of the day is talking about the the yep 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 the Bucks ended up winning by three against the Mavericks. And I don't want to overreact to the Mavericks. It's Luke uh, Porzingis the second game, um, and they were missing so many players. They were missing like I think 55 points per game in injuries or whatever. Um, and they were missing the guys that would normally guard Giannis. Giannis does have to make his free throws, but I'm not going to be right here picky. Um, but one for 10 is unacceptable for anybody, especially for a guy of his caliber. Um, and I saw a tweet from Kendrick Perkins. This is not an, a, a, a diss of Kendrick Perkins because I do believe that one day you will see me and Kendrick Perkins together at one form of another. I, I don't know why, but I, I feel like that is. But he was tweeting like, y'all MVP sitting in the corner while Chris Middleton is making the shots. And I can't help but to look at a tweet like that and be like, okay. Chris Middleton is a damn good player. I want Chris Middleton taking the three over Giannis. I think any basketball mind in the world would want Chris Middleton taking the three over Giannis, right? Right? Am I tripping? Am I tripping? And it's like Giannis' MVP was last year, dog. I don't even think people have Giannis as an MVP player right now. He's putting up great numbers, but I don't. I think voter fatigue is already out on Giannis. I don't think he wins this award this year. How about we show love to Cash Money, uh, Chris Middleton, who was who was close to 50, 40, 90 last year, and is taking that and was like, I'm actually going to be 50, 40, 90 this year. So I don't know. I don't know. How about and, and use Drew Holiday a little bit more in late game would be my my not um analysis on that one again Mavericks they'll be healthy and then we'll finally get to see what they look like with Porzingis and Josh Richardson and I think Dorian Finney-Smith was out too and it was one um, one other play James James Johnson played they were missing one other really good defender that would be guarding Maxi Kleber who I just call Maxi Kleber a really good defender um the last game that I want to talk about is this Jazz Hawks game and I guess it's not that much to talk about other than just re re going to the fact that Trey Young has lost his confidence and I, he needs to get it back. Think, look at this stat line. 24 minutes, 1 of 11 from the field, two free throw attempts for four points. For four points. All-star starter Trey Young has been in a slump. And and I've been, I asked on Twitter, like, what's going on with Trey Young? Uh, Troy, uh, Trey Young? Because I watch the Hawks, but I'm not a Hawks fan, so I'm not, like, really into it, right? And a lot of people are just saying, it's a slump, Kenny. It's just a slump, Kenny. But, like, a slump would be like what J.J. Redick was going through, where like he was still shooting the same amount of shots. They just weren't going in. Trey Young is not even attempting the shots anymore. He's not playing with the confidence that he was playing with just two weeks ago or all of last season. So I, I don't know if it's because John Collins called him out or because Steve Nash called him out on the way he's playing basketball. But it's hard to watch the Atlanta Hawks right now. It just is because Trey Young is not Trey Young. Honestly, John Collins hasn't been good either. They offered him $90 million. He turned it down. He bet on himself. And through the first whatever games, that looked like a bad decision. It was cool to see Nyeko Okongwu on the court for the first time. It was cool to see Rajon Rondo back, even though he didn't do a goddamn thing. Um, I don't know what else to say. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Let me know what you think about your favorite team. I'm sorry, Lakers fans. You got to win on national TV today. I just feel like the Lakers are the Lakers. There's no nothing I can really say other than, like, y'all are the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? And y'all will be great again. And you have been great again. You'll probably make a finals run again. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Call game.